Hi, this is the sixth lesson in a series about brushes in Photoshop. Like the other lessons so far, this really is about brushes prior to CS5 because they changed some with that version. We're going to be looking at them in CS4. If you missed the previous lessons, there's a link to them in the description for this one. So we'll start once again by opening the brushes panel. You might have it open, or you can use the brushes button here that has the brushes on it to open it, or you can go to Window, Brushes, or you can tap F5, and all of those things will open the brushes panel for you. This time we're going to look at color dynamics, so we need to set the brush up before we begin. Make sure that the brush tool is enabled, and then just right click anywhere over the image, which will open up the contextual menu and let you choose your brush. So we're going to go up here to the top and we'll choose the 19 round hard brush, except let's change the master diameter to somewhere around 40 pixels, around in there someplace. Then click anywhere off that panel to close it. Now we don't need shape dynamics, so I'm going to turn those off. And I'm going to click right on Color Dynamics, and that will enable the Color Dynamics and open the dialog box at the same time. And this is a bunch of jitters, which are fairly familiar to us from the other parts of the Brushes panel. And they work pretty much the same way. So the foreground background jitter at the top jitters between the color in the foreground swatch, which is right here, and the color in the background swatch, which is behind it. The farther to the left it is, the more foreground color you get and the less background color. So you get kind of this effect. And if you change it, the farther to the right you go, the more the background color gets added in. But you can also see that it's added through every single brush dab. So if you have a continuous stroke like this, you wind up with a sort of striped effect. If that's not what you were after, then turn the jitter off and turn the controls on. And let's undo these strokes with Command Z because I'm on a Macintosh. That would be Control Z on a PC, of course. And Option Command Z, that's Alt Control Z on a PC to step backwards and make them all go away. And now let's take a look at these. The first one, let's turn the jitter completely off, fades. And that's, you're used to that from the other fading that we've done. And it goes between the foreground and the background color in however many brush dabs you have in that text field there. So right now it's set at 50, which means that I'll start with a foreground color and 50 brush dabs later I'll have the background color and it'll just be that color for the rest of the time. Undo that. Pen pressure, you start with light pressure in the background color and as you increase the pressure, you move to the foreground color. Pen tilt starts with the foreground color when the pen is perpendicular to the tablet, and as you tilt it and become more parallel to the tablet, you get more of the background color till you're entirely background color. Stylus wheel. If the stylus wheel is pulled all the way back, which would be wide open in a real airbrush, you get the foreground color, and as you push it forward, you move into the background color. And rotation. As you rotate the pen, you change to the background color. I find that one difficult to control. Um, so I don't use it very much with rotation. However, all of these work together. They're combined. So if you have, for instance, the fade and you have the jitter, then you jitter until you get to the end of the fade. And the way the jitter works is to add jitter to whatever color it would be according to the fade. So as you can see, we don't have a whole lot of jitter. And up here, we start mostly with yellow. And down here, we're mostly into the purple. So that's the way those work. Make sure that's turned off if you don't want it. And um, speaking of which, let's turn those off and take a look at these. The hue, saturation, and brightness, of course, jitter the hue, the saturation, and the brightness. If you don't have a foreground and background jitter, then you're working entirely with a foreground color. So with a little bit of hue jitter, we will jitter on both sides of the color wheel from the color we started with, which in this case is yellow. So as you can see, we're getting a little into green and a little into orange, but not a whole lot. If you move all the way to 100%, you can get any hue in the color wheel. Now remember, these are jitters, which means you have no control over them at all. If you want to have more control, say changing between chartreuse and pale orange, you would set one color up as a foreground and the other as a background, and use the foreground background jitter, of course. So we'll undo those. Saturation the same way. You have a little bit of saturation difference toward the left of the bar, and as you move to the right, you increase the saturation difference, the, the jitter that you get. And brightness, same thing. Towards the left, you get a little bit of difference. And towards the right, you get a whole lot of difference in your brightness. And all of these work together with the foreground and background jitter. So if we have this brightness jitter and we turn our fade back on, then you'll notice that we have the jitter combined with the color from the fade for the entire thing. 
So that's the way they work. And if you turn all of these on, then you get this kind of wild thing, which just leaves the purity to talk about. So let's undo those strokes and turn all of these things off. Purity affects saturation. Towards the right, you increase the saturation, and towards the left, you decrease the saturation. And let's look at when you might want that. Say you have a fade going on like this. Dum -de -dum. Now, on the top here, the yellow is fairly saturated. That's a 68% saturation, and the purple at the bottom is 100% saturation. But in the middle, the colors become sort of faded. Some of these only have about a 50% saturation. If that's not what you want, then you can increase the purity, and you will get more saturated colors for the entire length of the stroke. And if you increase it all the way to 100%, then you get super saturated colors for the entire length, and they never become muted at all. And of course, moving the other direction, you can leach the color out of your stroke. And as you can see, it also is applied to the foreground and background colors. This is across the board, whatever color you have. And you can go all the way down and take all of the color out and go to grayscale if you want to. Although I'm not sure why you'd want to. Let's put this back at the default, which is zero, using the text box, which is just easier. So I can hear you saying that's all very well and good, but I don't really want to make stripy caterpillars. So how is this going to help me? Well, the answer is you change the brush tip shape. So let's go up here to brush tip shape, and I'm going to turn the diameter down a little bit to the mid 20s someplace there. And the important thing is you increase the spacing so that you don't have stripes. And as you drag it out, you get distance between them and you'll have individual brush dabs that are different colors. So let's go to shape dynamics and we'll turn the control off, but we'll leave some size jitter. And I'm going to turn the angle jitter up because I'm going to turn a fairly high roundness jitter on as well. And we'll go to scattering and we will scatter on both axes with no control and about 800 is good. And um, we'll leave the count alone. And then we'll go back to color dynamics and we'll turn off our fade and we'll turn the hue jitter to 100%. And now we have confetti just as easily as that. So hopefully this will give you an idea of some of the kinds of things you can do with color dynamics. Try changing the brush tip shape and you can make grass in various shades of green, or you can make exploding golden stars or other really neat things. But we are out of time. So next time, other dynamics. And until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.